Spiders are practical, and having one around the house is an effective way to cut down on the little critters, who are actually much more dangerous than the humble house spider. They eat houseflies and moths, which are a complete nuisance to any householder, but they also eat other bugs which can spread disease among humans and pets. Mosquitoes, cockroaches, and a range of other disease-riddled critters are on a spider's menu. In fact, it is estimated that your home will contain 2,000 less pests per spider if you leave them alone. Many arachnophobes wake up in cold sweats at the idea of the hideous camel spiders, which have come to the fore due to rumors spread by soldiers fighting in the Second Gulf War. Not only are camel spiders their own entirely separate species, related to both spiders and scorpions, they're also completely harmless to humans, and most of the stories spread by soldiers are completely false. They're not aggressive, they're not poisonous, and the only reason they would hide in your sleeping bag is to find shade not to attack you. In fact, the rumor that camel spiders can grow as large as a dinner plate is based on a hoax image of two tied together. Nothing to worry about there. First of all, most spiders aren't poisonous and the vast majority wouldn't try to bite you regardless of the circumstances. But even those considered the most dangerous spiders in the world are much less deadly than you might think. Black widow and brown recluse spiders are often conceived as a scuttling death sentence and anyone bitten by one is doomed to death, but nothing could be further from the truth. Brown recluse bites are known to cause necrosis, but 80% of documented cases of these bites are actually misdiagnosed diseases like MRSA. Even the arachnophobe's worst nightmare, a black widow bite, is fatal in only 5% of cases, even when they're not treated with antivenom. The truth is that most fatalities from black widows are among vulnerable groups like children and elderly. A University of Ohio study from 2012 found that people who are frightened of spiders are likely to perceive them as being much larger than they actually are, while those who have no aversion to arachnids perceive them as being the correct size. The subjects were asked to look at a tarantula before drawing a line on paper to indicate its size. The more terrified they were of the animal, the more they'd overestimate its size. Another similar study found that arachnophobes also perceive spiders as being much closer to them than they actually are explaining much about arachnophobic horror stories. We've already discussed how spiders kill household pests and other disease spreaders, but could a spider actually be an arachnophobe's best friend? After all, when spiders come into contact with one another, a gladiator-like battle unfolds, and at the end the winner eats the loser. If your home has a number of long-legged cellar spiders living in it, you'll notice that the population will gradually shift from lots of small spiders to a much smaller number of larger spiders. The classic platitude for arachnophobes is that spiders are much more scared of you than you are of them, and it's true. Spiders are predisposed to avoid humans and have no interest in sucking your blood, biting you, or anything like that. It's very unlikely that a spider will come anywhere near you or your bed more than once or twice a year, making the legend that you eat eight per year in your sleep complete rubbish as well. In fact, a spider can't even see you until you're about a foot away from it. They have terrible eyesight. That means that a spider isn't going to aim for you if it falls from the ceiling. It's probably just going to regain its grip. Spiders don't want to hurt you. They just want you to leave them alone.